You guys, it is my favorite day. It is mystery box unboxing day. I am so excited to see what crazy items I have to DIY with this time, so stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIY and budget home decor, as well as Cricut projects and wood builds. So if you love all things DIY, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. So if you are new to the Mystery Box Challenge, let me give you a refresh. So this is all coordinated. The mastermind behind all of this is Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. We have been doing this for about a year and a half now, and it has become one of my favorite things to do. She gathers up a group, so here's everybody participating in this one. You get a person's name and then they get your name. You pack up a box per the rules and instructions for that round. You send off your box and then they have to craft with the items. So for this one, you could go to any store and a mixture of stores. So it didn't have to be the same store. Sometimes we do just Dollar Tree, but this one, the sky's the limit, anything goes. You had $20 to $30 to spend in craft supplies, including two challenge items, which is what we always do. But the twist this time, the past couple ones, Courtney has been giving us a twist. The twist this time is that one of our challenge items had to be a non-perishable food item. I worry sometimes when Courtney thinks too much about these because she is really good at challenge items. She's really good at giving us all challenges and throwing us for a loop, so. I'm scared to know what food item is in this box. Nonetheless, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna find out. So I packed up a box and sent it over to Nicole at the Week's Nest. I have not done a direct collab like this with her before, so I'm really excited that I got to send her a box and I cannot wait to see what she creates with that stuff. Hopefully she's not too mad with my challenge items. I think they were pretty good this time. You'll have to go over and watch her video next to see what I sent her. And then my box came from Jessica over at Jessica Lynn at home. And this thing is huge. Like I can barely fit it in the frame. So we'll have to see what is in this box and what I have to DIY with. I swear this just popped open in transit. So I'm not cheating here. Let's go for this big thing because I'm really intrigued. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in this box. There's a card down at the bottom. I think I opened the wrong end of the box. Read me first. Okay. I went to Michael's for this challenge. To my surprise, everything summer was on sale, so I hope you can use everything. The challenge items are all wrapped up and marked. Good luck. Can't wait to see what you make, Jessica. Cool. So I guess there's a lot of items in here I'll have to DIY with. Ooh. Okay, here's one. This is a wood sign. It says, hey, sunshine on the front. That's cute. It's like an unfinished wood sign. Oh, this is cute. Little burlapy chalkboard sign. So we have some pink ribbon. Yeah, this looks like it came from the sale, which is super pretty for being on sale. Oh, this is interesting. They're not the same. So this one has a flat bottom and this one is just a wooden ball. So we'll see how that goes. I'll have to hide those from Finn. I don't think they're his toys. Like the popper last time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my last video. I had to go buy an additional popper because Finn was obsessed with the one that Yami sent me, so. Oh, some chalk. Then we've got three of these. Oh, these are cute. Looks like a, like a pink rose and then some yellow on there. Those yellows would be really pretty for fall. And then this, oh, this is so cute. This is a wood box. It's got like a, I don't know, a little placard thing on the front. I got three challenge items. Do I get extra credit for this? Hopefully. I'm gonna leave the food item till last because I'm kind of concerned as to what that will be. So here we have challenge item one. So these are tie pegs. Okay. So two packs of these little pegs. That might go well with that sign. My wheels are already starting to turn. Okay, and then we've got a larger challenge item number two. Oh. It is a shovel, a little, it's like a, Oh, it's for a terrarium, but it looks like for like a little like zen garden. A dusting brush, tweezers, rake, and a shovel. Again, we could probably use the wood from this, so not too bad. Jessica was really nice to me. And then we've got the challenge food item here. Hopefully you weren't supposed to do two at challenge and then another food, because Nicole got off easy then. <laughs> well, my one challenge item was kind of hard, so maybe that counted for two. Oh! <laughs> Green split peas. What in the heck am I gonna do with this? 
I guess we'll have to see. So I'm gonna take a couple days, figure out what I'm gonna do with all of this stuff, and then I will meet you back here to show you everything I create. So it's been a couple days and I've had a chance to figure out my plan for all the items that Jessica sent me. So we are going to do some fall DIYs. I know it is July, but I have waited long enough. I am ready to do some new fall decor DIYs. So that's what we're gonna do with these items. And we're gonna hop right in. We're gonna start with the most challenging item, those green split peas. I'm really excited to share with you what I did with those. So the base of the first DIY is going to be this burlap chalkboard sign that came in the box. So I'm gonna start by dismantling the back, getting off all of the stickers and the little yardstick because we won't need that. Then I took some of the chalk she also sent me and seasoned the chalkboard. Now I wanted to make something that kind of had a coffee house vibe and I already had these mini cups from Dollar Tree. So I decided to try something out and make some faux iced coffee. So I spray painted it with some orange spray paint. This is just what Walmart had when I needed it, but I usually like Rust-Oleum brand. And then I had some of this lightweight spackling on hand from Dollar Tree because I've seen a ton of people do these faux mug toppers and I wanted to try them myself. So I already had it and I figured why not try it. So on TikTok, I saw a video where someone put a little ping pong ball in these little cups to kind of fill the cups. So you don't have to put all the spackling in there, which I thought was genius. So I tried that here as well. And then I mixed some water with my spackling and added it to a just Ziploc bag and then trimmed the end of the bag so that I could pipe it on to the cups. I started by giving myself a base, let that set up a little bit, and then added some more to the top. You want to make sure that you don't add too much water because it will just kind of melt everywhere, but you need a little bit of water to get it to squeeze out of the bag. I had to test a couple, but once I did, I could pipe it on super easy like this, and then I just continued. I made one for my sign, and then I made three more for the tiered tray display that I was going for. I did have an issue the first time around, so I had to scrape off the tops and then reapply. But after that, I just cut up a Dollar Tree paper straw, inserted it into the spackling, and then I sprinkled on some cinnamon. I thought that would be great to harden in there to look festive, but also smell great too. Now, here come the split peas. For some reason when I saw these, I thought they looked like little candies. So I thought these would look really cute on top of my iced coffee as just like little festive, like little candy pieces or even kind of give the vibe of Breeze's pieces. So I took some painter's tape and stuck the split piece to it because it was so hard to paint like individually with them running around. So I did this and just added some chalk paint to the top. I did some brown, some orange, and some yellow so that I could then, once they dried, add them to the top of my little cute cups. And I wanted to make sure that it was set up enough that I wasn't going to mess it up, but I didn't want it to harden too much because then they won't stick in there. So I waited maybe 10, 15 minutes and then put them on the top. Then I used my Cricut to cut out a little decal that said cinnamon maple lattes were the fall special brew. You could do pumpkin spice, but I do not drink pumpkin spice, so that's why I did that. Then I took a little dowel rod that I had from another project you'll see later in the video, and I just cut two alternating 45 degree angles just to create a little kickstand for the back of my sign so it would sit up on its own. Using some hot glue, I attached that to the back where I wanted it so that it would sit up and it would balance with the weight of the cup in the front. And once all of that was hot glued, I had a really fun, cute little sign that is going to be perfect for my tear tray displays. I'm going to put this in my dining room near our coffee bar. And I love that I could customize it and do cinnamon maple latte versus a pumpkin spice, but you could do whatever. You could do a hot apple cider. There's a ton of different options, but these were a lot easier than I thought to create them. There've been a lot of other DIYers do them. And so this is definitely not my idea, but I did want to try it because they are so, so cute. And so I've got some on the sign and some to just disperse throughout my tiered tray. Up next, we are going to think outside the box with this wood box. So I've been eyeing a lantern like this at Kirkland's for a long time. And so I thought maybe I could take this box and create my own lantern. So that's what I did. So I came outside to start making this lantern and I'm gonna have to do a lot of measurements. I'm gonna have to figure out first with this box, like how I want my edges 
to come together so that I know length and then I can start figuring out creating one and then using that as a stencil. So the first step using the photo as a guide I drew two lines to create the arch that I was looking for. So now I've got my jigsaw, I've got some clamps, and I've got my 1x8 piece of wood here with my little outline for my lantern. So we're going to cut this one out and then I'm going to trace this so that each of them are the same versus me trying to freehand four of them because it was hard enough freehanding one. These curves weren't anything too stark so it was easy to go through and cut it out and it was a lot easier to cut one piece and then just use that as a guide because I was not going to get anything remotely close to what I needed without you know, kind of using it as a template, but really I was able to make fast work of it with this scrap one by eight that I had in the garage. You could use pretty much anything that you have to cut this out. I would keep in mind though with plywood, if you cut it out, the edges are kind of gross. They don't look very good when stained. So just keep that in mind. You just want a piece that's long enough to make the top of your lantern. Once I had all my pieces cut out, it was really not a science, but more of an art to go through, figure out where I needed to trim everything to get it to fit together, especially because it was cut with a jigsaw. It wasn't perfect, but once I got it all where I wanted it, then I sanded it down real quick with my orbital sander, and that also allows you to get some flatter edges. Then I needed some sort of piece in the center at the top for everything to come into. So I just took some more scrap wood and cut a little square. You'll see what I do with that in a minute. For safety reasons, I had to get the leg on the box before I could attach the tops. So I drilled some pilot holes with my drill and then I went through with just some little one inch screws that we had on hand and screwed up from the bottom of the box. I have flipped the box over by this point and screwed all four of my legs in. Once the legs were screwed in, I took that scrap little square and I used my nail gun to hook all the pieces to it. Then I had this finial that was already stained down in my basement. I had it from another project and didn't end up using it. And I also grabbed a little Dollar Tree shower curtain hook from my stash, cut off the little center clasp to hook it together, sanded it down, and then spray painted it a flat black so that it would look kind of like metal. And because my little finial piece was already dyed dark walnut, I went through and did the whole rest of my lantern base that color. I let it dry overnight and then I wanted to add a little bit more contrast so the little lip in the front of the box, I painted it black to give it some contrast. Then my last step was to assemble my little finial. So I took that plus the little shower curtain ring and just used some hot glue to stick it in. And then any hot glue that looked more clear than black, I just used some black chalk paint to get it to blend in. More hot glue to stick it to the top and my lantern was done. You guys, I am so proud of this lantern. I was worried it wasn't gonna work, but this is gonna look so cute with pumpkins in it. I mean, look, oh, so cute. I also love that it is neutral, so I could put whatever seasonal stuff I want in it. I could do Christmas, I could do a ton of different things, but I love the dark wood with the black. Like this is probably one of my favorite things I have ever made out of a mystery box. And I'm giving myself a pat on the back because I am getting better at power tools. I hope this inspires you too because this time last year I was afraid to turn on the saw so you can do it too. Then I decided I needed some florals for the inside of my lantern. So I went through and took off the yellow pieces of those little floral sprigs that were in the box. I also grabbed some Dollar Tree cotton stems that I just got and so they were in my stash and I bent them so that I could create a little mini wreath. To hook my wreath together, I just took some jute twine and tied at the places where the center kind of pieces of the cotton would come together. And I liked using the jute twine because it really kind of blended in with the brown little stems. Once I was done with the cotton, I wanted to bulk it up a little bit. So I used two pieces of lamb's ear. These are just from Walmart. And I did the same thing by using the jute twine to hook it all together. I did one piece in the back and then two on either side where I kind of took the lamb's ear leaves and tucked them into the cotton so it all looked more like one piece versus two pieces put together. 
Once that was all set, I kind of really made sure that it was formed into a circle. And then I just laid in my little yellow pieces. I didn't want to hot glue them because then I could switch them out for any season. I could also just have it be that neutral cotton and lamb's ear, but I really love those little yellow balls. I don't know what kind of flower they are. So if you know, comment down below, but I do think they are really pretty. And I use some of these also in the lemon bridal shower. And so they're kind of fun, different texture. It really complements that dark wood well. So I was excited that I could use that for a yellow pop for fall. Up next, we're gonna work on this Hey Sunshine sign, our challenge little tool kit, as well as our challenge little tie pegs. So my first step was to get to that unfinished wood sign underneath because we're doing fall and not summer. So I just used a flathead screwdriver and got as many pieces off as I could. Some pieces came off really easily, other pieces were a huge pain, but I used my fingers and just got off as much as I could. Then I just took my orbital sander and helped it along the rest of the way to get off the little pieces and it came off pretty easily. Then I decided to use my favorite lately, Briar Smoke from Verithane Stain and got all of the pieces of the sign stained. Then to give it a fall touch, I had one of these pumpkins left over from last year. I haven't found them at Dollar Tree yet this year, but I used my one pumpkin for the sign. I added some wood filler and let that dry. And while that dried, I went through and marked my little tools. I decided to use the pitchfork looking thing as well as the little shovel to give the vibe that it was tools that you would use at a pumpkin patch. After the wood filler was dry and sanded down, I just gave it a coat of orange chalk paint. And then I took my pieces outside to my miter box and just trimmed them down. They were a little too long and they looked kind of funky out of place with the sign height. So by cutting them down, they look like they were always meant to be there. I did think about staining the handles, but I like how they pop the unfinished wood off of the dark wood here. So I ended up cutting them so they staggered a little bit and I really like how that looks on the sign. Then I also hot glued my pumpkin down and added a little bit of jute twine to the top for a little bit of texture. Then I took those tie pegs and spray painted them with flat black spray paint. Back inside, I took three of my little tie pegs and marked where I would want them as little peg hangers. And I also measured my different areas of my sign so that I could create some decals for it. So on the pumpkin, it says pumpkin patch now open. And then at the top, I just did Johnson County Pumpkin Patch. And then I used my new favorite font, which is called Market Saturday. I will link it down below to do pumpkins, gourds, caramel apples. And then also on the bottom line, I did famous pumpkin donuts, hayride, and corn maze. Then my last step was to add my little hangers. So I took a drill bit, the size approximately of my little tie pegs. I wanted it to be tight and this size, which was 3 16 was perfect. I then used a rubber mallet to kind of pound it in there, but those things are not moving. It was the perfect size. And I got three across the bottom. So this sign is super cute. I like that the black coordinates with my little black tools on the left hand side. And I also like that I could hang something from it if I wanted to because those tie pegs are in there pretty solidly with that dark wood and the pumpkin and my new little muted fall florals in the background. I just really love this. It looks great on a shelf or it looks great hanging on the wall. Up next are these unfinished wood balls. I had one that was a full sphere and then one that had a flat bottom. So I took both of them and stained them the dark walnut color because I wasn't quite sure what to do and I figured maybe once I saw them stained dark, I would know what to do and that tends to happen sometimes. I'm like, I'll just stain it and figure it out later. So with this one, I thought this would be an adorable ornament, but because we're doing fall, we're gonna do a fall ornament, but this is a great idea to stash in your back pocket for Christmas time. I think I'm gonna make some DIY ornaments this way. So I just took one of these hooks and twisted it into the top. The wood is pretty soft, so it's able to go in there. If you need to drill a pilot hole, you can do that as well. Then I just cut out a decal that said hello fall on it, as well as some little tiny maple leaves on my Cricut. I applied the hello fall and I snipped areas of the transfer tape to allow me to push it down because it was on a rounded curved surface. And that helps so you don't get bubbles or you know gapping. 
After my letters were on there, then I just took the transfer tape and added sporadically around my little ornament the little maple leaves so it kind of looked like they were falling. And I think this turned out super cute with all of the different leaves on it. I wanted to add a little embellishment at the top, so I just got this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I tried a few different ways, but I ended up cutting it down the center and then cutting the ends so that it kind of just looked like a little full bow. I plan to use this on a tiered tray. I like the neutral vibes, but also the little leaves for fall. And I plan to make a ton of these for Christmas. So these will probably be coming back around in a video around Christmas time, but it was super easy that you can get those eye hooks really at Walmart or your hardware store. And it was really easy to attach and make it into a little hanging ornament. So for the other ball, I thought the one with the flat side could be a pumpkin. So I started by taking some orange chalk paint and painting the entire thing. And then I wanted to reuse that stick from the first project that came off the chalkboard. So I just cut off a little piece of the end and then I glued it to the top to give it a little stem. Now this, I was thinking it was gonna be a little abstract, a little modern, but I think it actually turned out super cute. So I glued the top to my pumpkin and before I did that I tied on some jute twine just to kind of give it a little texture. And then I just took some brown and orange paint and gave it some lines so it looked like it was a little more rounded like a pumpkin. It just looked a little flat without anything on there. I think this guy is super cute. It's another cute little filler for a vignette or a tiered tray. You could also add a really cute little jack-o'-lantern face on there for Halloween, and then that would really scream pumpkin, but I like that it's understated. And finally, I was super challenged with that pink ribbon in the box because I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna make that fall, and then it hit me. So I have a collection of random Dollar Tree glassware in my stash. And so I grabbed this one because I thought it would look really cute in my lantern, but I wanted to make it kind of look like a luminary. I recently did a kind of glass luminary for the Holy Family and the Nativity in my Christmas in July video, which I will link for you. But this made me think I could use this as some sort of stencil on there. I've seen people use doilies before on like Pinterest and TikTok. And so I thought maybe this could do the same thing. So I just used some painter's tape and I lined it up because the little curves, you could really get it flush across your piece of glass. So then I just took some frosted glass spray paint and went directly at it instead of going at an angle and sprayed it just like I was spraying a stencil. Once that was dried, I removed my little lace ribbon and I had a really fun print on the outside of my glass that I thought would look really nice if I put a tea candle in there. So it had the little lace pieces and you could kind of see where the painter's tape was in the back, but you won't see it in the back. So I wasn't too worried about it. It's hard to see the print on camera. I tried really hard to capture it, but it doesn't translate super well. But once I put the light in there, you can see it through some of the openings and I really like it. It also would make a really fun little centerpiece for your table for the fall season if you want to put it in the wreath that we made earlier. But you can put them all three together in that lantern and I absolutely love how it looks. The warm light, I'm just so ready for cozy fall. It is super hot in Illinois this week and so I'm channeling the fall vibes. So as a quick refresher, here's everything that Jessica sent me in the mystery box. And here are all the items that I created with those supplies. A huge thank you to Courtney for always coordinating these mystery box challenges. They are such a fun time. I will link her channel down in the description so you can check out all of her projects as well. Also down in the description, you'll find the full playlist for everybody's video. But up next for you is Nicole's video over at the Week's Nest. So you can see all the stuff she created with the box I sent her. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Finn, do you like the box that Jessica sent us? Say thank you, Jessica, for my cool new box to add to my collection. Say thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Finn, can you wave? Say bye. Good job, bub.